Und come on in! Hello everybody, it's Michelle Marie Tony. I got my seat next to me. He was laying where I got my fat ass and he just I had to move him over a little bit so I could sit down. And let's see, we got some things to talk about. Um and I tried to do this a couple of days ago and uh it didn't come out the way I wanted it. So we decided to um just scr scratch the broadcast and start over from scratch. Um, on Friday morning, I mentioned briefly the theme from Mahogany, and I, I went through, because I do have the vinyl, but it didn't come with liner notes, so I had to go digging for, through a lyrical case to find them. And this is called the theme from Mahogany. I'm going to read you the whole set of lyrics, and then we're going to explain what is pertinent. And it says here, do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Do you get what you're hoping for? When you look behind you, there's no open doors. Where are you hoping for? Do you know? Once we were standing still in time, chasing the fantasies that filled our minds, you knew who I loved you, but my spirit was free. Laughing at the question that you once asked of me. Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Now looking back at all we've planned, we let so many dreams just slip through our hands. Why must we wait so long before we'll see how sad the answers to those questions can be? And last time the stanza says, Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is showing you? Where are you going to? Do you know? Do you get what you're hoping for? When you look behind you, there's no open doors. Where are you hoping for? Do you know? Why did they bring that up? Yes. Because the metaphorical questions of this is actually very interesting to look back upon in your own life and see where you've been and where you're going and and then let's try to answer those questions it says do you know where you're going to um uh, do i know where i'm going to hmm um does anybody really know where they're going to um I know I'm going home on the other side when my chores are through. I'm going with Lomi, and that I can tell you is a bona fide truth. Um, I've seen a lot of things in the past. I've seen a lot of things in my life that have been good, and some things that haven't been so much. But the future is honestly really kind of murky. I'm not a ability to search into the future and, and give you an answer. To the future questions. I'd love to, but I'm not, as I said, I don't have the ability to see into the future. Um, and then the next question was, is, do you like the things that life is showing you? That's a hard question. Do I like the things that life is showing me? I'd have to say that I've seen a lot of things in the good and the bad since this lifetime. I was born in 1968. I, I spent my first few years in the 70s and 80s. I was in high school. And in the 90s, I, I was in college. And I saw the world start to deteriorate more and more quickly. Social structures, the family structures, everything was just quickly getting in, going into a sense of disrepair and decay. So do I like the things that life has shown me? And the answer is no. In the large part. Do I like what life is showing me as I get older as far as how my body is reacting to age? I mean, this is the, uh, the first lifetime I've ever lived beyond my 30s. Um, actually, I usually died within the 20s. So... Um, right now, I'm about uh, 27 years older than I've ever been. 
And I'm experiencing the same thing everybody else does. As, as I mentioned about the society, it also puts them in bodies that decays and, and starts to fall apart and it doesn't always work right. And, and, um, and I feel kind of, you know, frustrated that I can't change how things are going for me because the resources that I would need to make them change uh, are not available to me. Uh, we talk about, people talk about lifestyle lifts and tummy tucks and, and yeah, I could really use a tummy tuck big time. Um, I kind of wish I could have gotten one. I got a, I'm not skinny. Um, I'm kind of stocky in a good way. I mean, a, a lot of muscles on me, but I, I'm still kind of falling a flap despite my desires to be like um, another singer song there. Um, those were the days. Um, I actually printed her words too, but I don't have the same printer right now. I just have this one because um, I wanted to text this one first um, because I felt I could answer it and I am going to try it. Last question is... Did you get what you're hoping for? <laughs> now, I can't say yes and I can't say no. Did I get what I was hoping for? What was I hoping for? I was hoping to settle down, have a family. I mean, no, this is what I wanted to do in my life. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to have a family. I wanted to raise children. Um, I wanted to be something successful in my life. Instead of being a legally blind, handicapped individual who happens the only thing that they reach out to the public is through a YouTube channel. Nothing wrong with YouTube. It's, it's, been, it's a great resource, but it, it's not the same thing as saying, is, is this my lifelong dream? Well, a lifelong dream besides having a family was to run a radio station. Um, a fully licensed AM radio station. That was my dream. Um, but the Federal Communications Commission uh, makes the application so hard to apply to get a radio station that um, it, it's not a tantrum to a person who's handicapped who has no job. And since I'll never be uh in the kind of person that has uh, resources to make that dream come true. It's kind of like a sad waste of reality that it, that's not going to be. So I have to accept that, you know, I'm lucky enough that I got on the YouTube and I'm, I'm presenting my videos and things. Uh, so, yeah, I think... I, I can say this is I, it's a mixed feeling to that question. I don't feel like I really got what I was hoping for. Um, and the last one, which is part of that question. When you look behind you, there's no open doors. There's no open doors anywhere in your life. Once you pass through those doors, the doors close and you can't turn away and go back. I love the I love this clause. I'm gonna read it. It says, "Now looking back at all we have planned, we let so many dreams just slip through our hands. Why we why must we wait so long before we see how sad the answers to those questions can be?" Yeah, you know they say I like to say the foresight is twenty four hundred, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, you can't really change things as we see ahead. We only see a little murky haze, kind of like my cataract to my right eye does. And, um, and so you, sometimes you have to just basically grope in the dark or in the haze without your glasses and try to plan for the best we can. But then when you look back at all the things you've done in your life, good and bad, then you go, oh, well, gee, you know, why did I do that? You know, and I, I see why I could have done it, but I don't know why I did it. Um, 
very, very interesting song. I, I really think Diana Ross did a wonderful pe- um, performance in this movie and on the song as well from Mahogany. A great song. Um, if you ever watched the movie, it's um, she's talking about, in part of this, about her boyfriend. Um, uh, the fact that they kind of broke up for her to go and do her dream of becoming a fashion designer in Milan, in Italy. Um, but although even so, it was still um very interesting piece of um, story. But because of the RIE policies in YouTube, I can't. Which kind of sucks, because if I played, for some of you who have never heard, it would be an interesting for you to hear in the experience here for the first time. And then for those of us who were around when that song came out and that story came out, um, we go probably going to reminiscing about our own pasts. Um, most people don't realize is besides doing videos on YouTube, I'm also very much into music and have always been that way. So yeah, if you ever listen to a piece of music that uh, kind of just resonates with your heart and you... And you keep wondering why that is, and especially if there's metaphorical questions in the video or in the song like there is in this one, and you want to try to answer those questions, maybe you can help answer why you feel the way you do with that piece of music. Um, I still love the accompaniment on it. I still love the way it's performed. I still like the way it's done, and it's a wonderful piece. Um, just like I love the one by Mary Hopkins, those were the days. I love the way she did that piece. And likewise, last but not least, I like the the song by Mary, um, Helen Reddy called Delta Dawn. I had a chance to take a look at the lyrics today um, as well. And I kind of didn't print those, but I um, thought they were quite in, uh, interesting. Now, um, I don't know what the future holds. As I said, my future is... For me, to see the future is like me trying to grab around in the dark, okay? I, I can't tell you the future other than what I have coming up for plans. So that's all I can tell you. Hello. Um, Michelle wants to, wanted me to do the end of the video with her. Um, everybody knows my name is Dory. And um, I just want to say hi to everybody. Um, I miss you all. I miss doing videos, but I I don't know. Lately, I've been pretty bummed out myself. Sorry. So I just want everybody to know that I am <coughs> doing a little better. I've been pretty bummed out, but I'm doing a lot better. Um, here's Michelle. Hi. I, as you know, I showed you that video I did a little bit earlier today about answering some of the metaphorical questions in this song, which is from the theme from Mahogany. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know what you thought about what I said about the questions I asked about the song. What you thought from what you heard in the video? Well, I like the song. I I mean, like, the, the lyrics seem pretty, pretty well written um well, let me ask you the same questions that okay. i asked all right do you know where you're going to i'm hoping i'm going to paradise um i hope i'm because today in church they were talking about um that there is a hell and that people do go to hell and you do know some of those people choose to go to hell on purpose right that's what they said some of those people like michelle said choose to go to hell and me i don't want to go to hell because let me let me and i don't want to go to hell i want to go to paradise because i want to be able to see my mother and my father and my whole family again and i really want to go to paradise in fact, that uh, the thing about the hell, about being a choice, is the key piece. Your average person who believes in being good and living a just and pious life, even if they screw up, is not going to go to hell. It's the ones that choose to go to hell, who truly 
do not want to be with Christ and his angels. That's different than a lot of the evangelicals have been teaching. So it's true that Jesus knows that we are not perfect. And yet by going and go through the act of reconciliation in the Catholic Church for an example, and we ask for absolution for our sins, and by speaking our sins out loud in the confessional, takes a lot more guts than quietly saying behind the scenes, sorry, 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 because it means that you really truly are making a commitment to change your life. So, okay, next question is, do you like the things that life is showing you? Hmm. Well, there's two ways you can look at that question. One is, let's see, right now I'm having a hard time dealing with some things and I don't like the way it's going. And the next is because is I, I want a lot more than what, I, what I'm giving myself right now. So I'm hoping maybe someday I can give myself a lot more than I, that I should. Because right now there's part of my life that is empty. So, mm -hmm. okay. And the last one here is, let's see. So I think I did the same thing this morning earlier. Um... Did you get what you're hoping for when you look behind you, there is no open door? So obviously, yes, that's the second part of the statement. Did, do you get what you're hoping for? Did I get what I'm hoping for? Yeah. Not yet. I haven't reached that point in my life yet. I'm hoping soon I reach that point, point in my life that I get what I'm hoping for and I can get what I want and where I want to be. Okay. Now, based on watching my video clip earlier in my answer to that question, you notice I couldn't help but bust out laughing at that question. Um, and I bet you probably wondered why. But she was doing the same thing in the bedroom watching the video clip, too. So, um, maybe we have to ask a question why you probably thought that was funny because I was giving a good belly laugh at that one. It just caught me funny with the way you answered it. It was really cool. I mean, I think the reason I kind of because when you when you're a t when you're a kid, okay, um, and this is a plus to anybody, you know, you have a goal in your life, what you want to do when you're a certain age, you know, and then you get to be that certain age, and it's like, oops, that didn't go too well, <laughs> or yay, it went perfect. <laughs> I think it's more like the second one is the more likely to cause uh, the situation. Or it doesn't quite work out the way you expected it to. I think that's why I was kind of, you heard me laughing like a maniac there. It was because um, it seems like we always kind of try to focus on doing something with our lives and then our lives don't work out the way we expected them to. Um, for example, what... Okay, let's talk about when you were younger. Let's say high school, because at least high school, you kind of got an idea of what you're aiming for for future. What did you want to be doing after high school? I wanted to be a hairdresser. Okay. But I never thought that I had what it took to be a hairdresser. I never believed in myself that I can go ahead and do it. And then, um, and then I wanted to be, then I, when I got out of high school, I tried a CNA three times, and the fourth time I made it, and the, because because I made it because of my mother, I felt my mother's spirit with me. Mm -hmm. So, so but I always wanted to be a hairdresser, but I never gave myself enough credit to go out and do it. Well, you know that's may not be too hard to go ahead and try to do it. No, now. I no, I'm too, I, I don't want to be a hairdresser now. There's too many out there. Well, I want, I want What did you want to be, Michelle? I want to be a housewife, actually. Lumi, what about you? I don't know. I never really thought about it. I was so focused on just trying to survive in county. And 
and then of course living on my own and and studying to be the the snow queen of Finland in the Compi area, I didn't really think much more about what I was doing other than, than my studies and sorcery and washing a lot of dirty dishes and plates at the tavern I worked in. Yeah, I've done that job. <laughs> yes, I know you have. Um, so, and uh, like I said, this is a really good song. I will play the song for Dory later on today uh, after it's, that we're done here because I can't play the video on the song on YouTube. Why? Oh, because of the copyright thing. I got the song. Yeah, it's on the pile so over there in the pile. Now, uh, you got any other questions for me? Then let me. Um, no. Really can't think of anything right at the moment. Well, you asked this one earlier, which. Um, oh, I asked him earlier. It was kind of a personal question. Um, uh, I asked. I asked Michelle. Um. I'm kind of embarrassed to add an answer on the TV. I'll, but, I'll actually but, answer for you. I'll, 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 I'll want, see what the question was she asked me. She asked me, she says, were you ever a boy in any of your other lives? Yes, that's what I asked her. And I get told her the truth is, to my memory, the last time I was a, a boy, I was a Roman centurion in 5 AD. Um, Lumi was been more of a masculine figure throughout her most of her, um, her life. I would say her because she is androgynous, but she is a masculine spirit. So she does, um, she can wear this, she can wear the jeans or she can wear the dress. It really doesn't matter. Except as a woman, she's much more, um, she's not as good. She's not as successful. It integrates into the woman's world. Whereas if for me, trying to be a man doesn't integrate in with the man's world. Um, it just happens to be that my soul is predominantly female and hers is predominantly masculine. Right. And of course, we do take turns, um, everybody does, um, uh, learning about the other gender, um, because it's how we can become well-rounded citizens of the other side or the heavens above, if you will. The only people who really do not get a chance to do this are those souls who go through the left door. You probably know it as hell um, because they are given their job orders by the demons and then those people don't have a choice of what they're going to be. And that makes people really frustrated and really angry and then those people um, of course, they are infused by evil anyway, uh, tend to lash out at other people, um, because of the suffering, which is self-inflicted because they entered the dark realm voluntarily. In other words, nobody is truly born evil. Okay. Um, I must point that out. It's... A decision that occurs over lifetimes. That some people choose to go for the dark forces, and other people choose to go for the light forces. You want to talk about the eleven eleven portals set by uh, Rebecca Messenger? Yeah, we'll bring this up real quick. Um, Rebecca Marina Messenger was asked by Mother God to open up several portals around the world specifically to allow for the Dark Souls a way to get out of Hell card for free. Um, basically, it works like this, is that when, it's, when a Dark Soul has a chance to want to go home, it's got it's really hard for them to go home because the forces that keep oppressively keep them here. But with the portals that were opened, is that everybody, because with Divine Mother and Divine Father, God love you so much, are giving them a chance to return home at with with no charge, pro bono, free. Um, and this includes, of course, pets, um, our favorite dogs and cats, that, which are also souls and may have been trapped here, are also being given a chance to go home as well. So all the souls that can are are leaving this earth because of the equivalent of Ragnar Rock that's coming up, or better known in the Christian world as Armageddon. Um, 
for those of us who have not yet been gathered in the clouds, as it says in the book of Revelation, um, we have to just roll with the punches with it. Um, but please note that Mother and Father God, regardless, will always be there and protect you from the evil forces. As long as, and this is always key, that you willingly allow Mother and Father God to work on your behalf. They can't force the issue, but you yourself can always ask for their guidance and protection. Right. And uh, that kind of goes in a little bit different topic than that song video, but uh, still. Any other questions? No. Okay, it's not too late. Bye bye. Bye. Have a nice night. Hey, did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our websites? Are you watching all four of them? If not, check them out. There's a list right here. We got three YouTube channels and one audio only channel for your enjoyment. So come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace.